Yo, 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 what's going on, sports family? And we back again with another episode of Mike and Friends. And today we got the usual suspects, the family in the building, man. We got Nate checking in from the West Coast, in the West Coast, finally. You feel me? I'm back at it. (laughs) You feel me? Repping (laughs) Crenshaw. Shout out Nipsey, man. Uh, And we got my brother Cop, man, checking in all the way from Maryland, man. Checking in, Mm -hmm. man. Happy G-Day to the OG, for sure. Uh, Much love. Much love. Good to see y'all, man. For sure, man. Likewise, man. We gonna be in and out of here today. But just to uh, shout out the sponsors, man. Shout out to TOV Sports, man. Uh, This whole production is being brought to you by them. So make sure you go over there and check them out. TOV Sports at IG, YouTube, everywhere. They everywhere. So we gonna go ahead and get it started, man. We got a little, we got some sad news to start it off, man. An untimely demise, uh, untimely death, man, of uh, John Thompson, man. So I'm a Kyle, I'm gonna let you start off first, man, because I know you knew him, you know personally. You worked out with him, did you know did some camps with him? So I'm gonna let you speak on on just uh, the death of John Thompson and what he meant to you, you know. Yeah, man. So, uh, first of all, rest in peace, John Thompson, man. Uh, great guy, all around great guy. Uh, my deepest condolences to the whole Thompson family. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, John Thompson, he was like a, a father figure to me. Mm-hmm. Coming up from the Washington, D.C. county area, you know what I mean? You know, the hoop culture is huge around here. So, and he, he was legit like the godfather around here, you yeah. know, coming up. Norristown is was the pinnacle of hoops uh, mm-hmm. for DC. You know they put on, uh, and he is the reason Georgetown is what it is today. Um, his impact was crazy. He it was much deeper than basketball. Did in multiple interviews, he was he utilized basketball as a tool to teach and to you know what I'm saying empower black black. Uh, Black men, you know what I mean? This is a guy who bought, think about it, it's a predominantly white institution, a uh, very wealthy school. Uh, coming up in the, and back in the old days, guys were saying, oh, Georgetown was an HB just because of the hoop culture. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, he's getting guys out the hood and putting them on, you know what I mean? Exactly. Put, changing their lives, you know what I mean? From, you know, AI, he grabbed AI straight out of, straight out of jail. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. This is a Hall of Fame speech. Says it all. Nick, Nick grabbed him from the chain game, man. That is yeah. the real one. <laughs> Turn out the trenches. Yeah. yeah. Hey, like so. And uh, in this past year, when I was working with the program, I got to know him. So I, I knew him from going to his son JT 3s camp from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came up, went there. I, I was my first overnight basketball camp. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so that's why I mean that was my first initial when I first met him, and uh, yeah. this past year, like I said, I had a chance to work with the team as a team manager, and uh, I just got to know him more on a personal level. Every time I talked to him, it was he was spitting straight wisdom. You know what I mean? Like, it was yeah. you gained some knowledge. Like you couldn't do nothing but lock in on what he said. Like his presence, his aura was different. I'm telling you, like he had come in the gym, and mind you, this man was. He, he was in the gym on practice this year. You know what I mean? Like you, you saw OG had to give you. Yeah. You know, so and every time he would come to the gym, everybody would stop, say what's up, and he had to tell, tell people like, "Nah, y'all go ahead do your thing." But this is anywhere we went. You know what yeah. I mean? Like uh, really made a stand out. We would scrimmage the Temple at Temple, and he came to the game. And afterwards, when I tell you, everybody from the coaching staff, the players, the uh, video coordinators got in line and shake his hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, he's an all around great dude, man. His impact will forever be felt. Uh, got his own statue in our facility up Georgetown. It's crazy. It's mm-hmm. Eight feet, life size. You know what I mean? Like you know, the John Thompson Athletic Facility. So, I mean, his yeah. impact, I could only aspire to be do half as much as he's done. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, much condolences. Uh, been a rough couple of days, but 
Uh, definitely left his mark on here, man. Shout out OG. I don't see him on the shirt, man. For sure, yeah, for sir. sure, for sure, Real man. Cool. Shout out to John Thompson, man. Right, and, man. And, and just to chime in before I let you go, Nate, um, what I just from what I learned, like my first time seeing him was the AI speech Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame speech. Mm-hmm. Then from there, I'm like, man, this nigga is big. I ain't know how. I'm like, dog as tall as hell. Like, but I, I still, is he a foot? <laughs> 610. He was okay, so he's all right. So I, I'm not wrong. I was looking like, damn, dog, huge. Like, but man, just 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 shout out to him, man. Just being the first African American to win the you know the championship, then the guys that he didn't get in with uh Ewing, um AI, like you like you said, like he came and grabbed AI out the sale, you know what I'm saying? So uh just those type of guys and those type of black men, you know, I, I definitely just want to salute them just for making, you know, just uh forever, ever like uh how can I say this? Everlasting changes in our community, you know, definitely just we wouldn't have just think if he wouldn't have got his hands on AI, we probably wouldn't have got blessed to see what AI has become and you know, did what he hey, did man. in the league. So hey, you know, AI, AI said that uh he lost all the scholarships. After that, yeah, that, every that, single, every single one. Yeah. So, hey, that's a good point. That's yeah. legit. Yeah, yeah. And it, but uh, continue. And bro. it's just like too, like with them, it's, it's just like I don't know. And I, like I said, I, I never, I don't know him personally, but you could tell, like, all right, he giving that OG, like he could, you could tell he giving that OG wisdom off, and he don't want nothing for but the best for everybody, and you could tell that by his acts, and he lived it. And like I said, I don't have much to say, man. I just want to salute him for sure. Um, and salute the other people that had passed, you know, Chad with Bozeman, Untimely Demise. Um, but definitely right now, definitely salute John Thompson, man, because he's one of them guys that he affected my life and he didn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? He blessed me with AI. You feel me? So, so mm-hmm. you know, and he blessed me with, with Pat. And even though I don't like Pat, but I'm a Knicks fan. And I got to see Scotty Yam on Pat. I got to see George yeah, Yam on guy, Pat. So, <laughs> Pat, my guy, man. Pat, my guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Pat, it. man. <laughs> Shout out to Pat for sure, man. But, yeah, though, uh, Nate, I'm going to let you go, man. Word, man. I don't have too much to say about him. Uh, you know, condolences to the family, condolences to the program, any friends, the loved ones. Uh, but what I respect about him most, what I was just telling Kyle, was his emphasis on education and just, like, bettering yourself as black men because obviously you know the goal is to get to the nba but the percentage is not that high like you know barely anybody in terms of like the regular population goes plays collegiate but then from there it's even smaller to go play professionally so he knew that and you know i think he's instilled values in the people that came into his program that were much bigger than basketball you know and like listening to kai right now listening to ai speech listening to you know rachel nichols just on the jump was talking about how she grew up you know, we talking about a little white redhead girl in D.C., but, you know, every time she saw John Thompson in the city, it was kind of like seeing the Don, like Kyle was saying, you know, seeing yeah. a boss, seeing like a, you know, above earth type figure because he was just somebody that was just so impactful for that D.C. region. And, you know, if you're a basketball lover, basketball in general. Um, so, you know, I'm grateful for him. Like I said, he left an amazing legacy, especially on Georgetown and the DMV area. And, uh, you know, that's what we aspire to do here. You know I mean? Like he said, you know, if we could do half what he did, impact some lives, like I feel like I live pretty solid life and have done solid with the sports. So, you know, condolences to the fam and thank him for his service. In fact, though, I ain't even going to cap <laughs> without him. And I, I, you know, of course, I ain't know how deep it ran with Georgetown. I, Georgetown definitely wouldn't be what it is today because just think at like, to to just to this day, you know, even though they may not even have a team, but they always in a talk of things because mm-hmm. you always know Georgetown gonna cook up something just from what from what uh he established there, man. And definitely want to salute everybody. My condolences out to you, Cot, the whole family, everybody. So everybody in the DMV area, everybody that was impacted by this man. So definitely salute to you. And I know you up there kicking it up with Nipsey right now, you know. Having a good one, some real talk. My man up there courtside watching Kobe Bowl right now. I'm about to try to you, <laughs> As man. we speak. As For we sure. speak. For sure. Man. Salute. Salute to man. Again, like I said, John Thompson, man, legend, forever legend, a Hall of Fame legend, everything legend about that man. So it ain't no flaw.
Man. Uh, y'all got anything else with with John Thompson or y'all good? So leave it over there, man. Real as it gets right there. Real as it gets. Facto, you know man. Facto, 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 facto. Peace, OG. For sure, though. But facto, man, we go ahead, go ahead, move it on to sure. uh, the Clippers versus Dallas series. And uh, we the Clippers got them out of there. You feel me? I ain't, I don't know. I was a little nervous, but I, I always was saying, man, Kawhi, Kawhi lied before a 40 piece. But uh, I want to get y'all thoughts on what happened, man. Nate, your boy's in the second round, man. So I need to get your thoughts on what's going on. You think, uh, you think it's going to be a fairly easy uh, series this next go round with whoever um, the, the team they face? Well, I'm going to say that, uh, you know, I think from jump that we said that the Clippers mass series will probably go six, five or six. So, you know, Luca went in, he snatched a game. Uh, 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 yeah, he snatched a game or two. No, just the one. Yeah. But that one was like pretty iconic. So that was cool to see, you know, see the young dudes, the passing of the torch. And even against Kawhi and PG, like you can see how effective he was even at 21. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's definitely going to be a problem uh, going forward. But I like what I saw from their other guys. They fought hard. Uh, Tim yeah. Hardaway. Seth Curry, I like what I saw from Bogdanovich. You know, I hope they get him some more minutes. Yeah. But honestly, I was very uh, encouraged by what I saw from Kawhi because Paul George, you know, he was in his head. He came back with a nice performance, but uh, Kawhi was clearly carrying that torch and was just like, you know, let's go out and dominate, finish this series. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're rolling into the next series. I, I'm not going to say I'm concerned, but I don't want to see Denver because if they come back from a 3-1 down, that means that they're going to have momentum. Like, you know, that's just – uh, emotional and mental momentum that you do you have going into a next series when your guard is over here having 50 on what's considered, you know, one of the best defenses in the league. Like, that's good momentum. You know, get, they just got Gary Harris back. Jokic is starting to play some really good basketball, shoot the ball well. So if I'm the Clippers, I don't want to see Denver. I mean, I still think we'll get them out of there in six. Uh, maybe six. Could possibly go seven if Jamal's playing like he is because we don't have nobody that can stop him right now, especially with Patrick Beverly. Uh, sideline but if we see the jazz I, th- I think we'd get them out of there in five that's me being generous we could sweep them i think i think we could sweep the jazz but i yeah. you know i'll, I'll, give, them they, <laughs> I'll, I'll give them their credit and say that maybe they can get five you know donovan mitchell goes out there has a big game rudy yeah. gobert that's our issue right now you know we don't have any interior protection and they do with rudy so maybe they can get a game off of that but I think the casual NBA fan for sure wants to see Denver. Like nobody really want to see the Jazz, bro. Nobody wants to. We want to see we want to see Jamal go for some more 40, 50 pieces and we want to see Jokic versus uh that Clipper defense. So that's who I want to see. I ain't going to lie. I don't think we going if I mean if Denver makes it over, I don't think we going to see any more 40 even 30 point for performances from uh Murray. I don't want to be I don't want to speak too Ooh. soon but I don't think that's happening. I don't know if, if Bev coming back for the second round. I, I should think so. I would think so that mm-hmm. he is. But all oh, that shit stopping Brian ain't gonna hold. If it, Tim Hard- <laughs> if Tim Hardaway can work the Clippers for 27, then yeah. Jamal Murray can for sure have a 30 piece. You I feel know what I'm you, but like, I like I, I they had Paul boys, George guard him getting cooked. I think them boys done like tapped into that different mode right now. And and one thing I seen from the series that I, I liked, I definitely on Dallas saying I feel like they just won. One solid piece away, man, because mm-hmm. just just being able to put up that fight, taking them to six games, you know, um, possibly hell, they probably could have taken the seven. Or some people say they probably could have won it if Porzingis ain't sit out. So uh, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like they won piece away, and they definitely did what they had to do for this season. So um, I'm I'm not mad at that. And another thing, like that, I want to bring up too is just this uh, this clip right here. You know, Luca always. You know, that's my guy. But he, he just, he just been coming off as a whiner lately. You feel me? And and to be the, to be the guy that, that's always like, man, he, he hit me, he hit me. This nigga damn near knocked Reggie Jackson ass out. You feel me? So man, it's, it's just always, a- it's always just. I don't know. It's funny. So it, I, don't, I feel like this, this series got a little bit more touchy. Like Pete right here. Like, come on, for like you ain't going for the ball with that, bro. You just punched this nigga in the back of the head, bro. Like, hey, look, this, this what I'm gonna say about this what I'm gonna say about Luca, bro. Cause yeah. you know he he has been whining to an yeah. extent, but but he been answering questions that the media asked him. Like the first time Marcus Morris stepped on his ankle, he said he hoped it wasn't intentional, but you know he yeah. ain't got nothing to say to him. 
And then when, when Marcus Morris came over and slapped him, I mean, shit, I'd be, I'd be upset too. Like, they, yeah. you got to think, bro, they doing all that to a 21-year-old. Marcus Morris is that irked by a 21-year-old's performance that he feels the need to get ejected in the first quarter but, of the game. But, you but, feel but me? You like, gotta, not, you got to you got to you got to you got to he can't guard. He, he, he that man, he can't guard him, bro. He's 21. No, More, fact, though, I give like, you that, but I don't think it was I don't think it was soft to me. I don't think it was just he was mad that he couldn't guard him. It's just more just that type of nigga like you see him prisoners. Yeah, it's, like you look, saying, look, and one LeBron in Boston and just yelling, no. like, bro, that's just who that nigga is. But hey, like, I, I feel that. But you feel me? I, I worked with when I was with the Wizards. You feel me? They had Markeith and they had, you know, the families was always around. So I saw Marcus a few times when they played the Celtics and stuff. And I'm not gonna sit here and act like they not tough guys. But you, yeah. you, you slapping somebody driving to a, a, the lane that that to me yeah. is not toughness. You feel me? Like toughness to me, you yeah. getting you you staying in the game, and you getting those stops when it matters. Because wholeheartedly, if they had Porzingis, bro, I think it would have went seven. Like, I, you know, we didn't even play – the Clippers didn't even play great ball except that one game where we really smacked uh, the Mavericks. The fact yeah. that it took us close games and they came back, like, from multiple 18-point, 20-point leads, like, that's not encouraging if you're a Clip, like, if you're yeah. the Clippers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, also, they, they also were very just under, to, undermanned. Just just to, just to also just chime in, Kyle, I'm going to let you get in here in a second, but – uh. You got to, from what I've seen, they didn't play the games like how they usually play, bro. Because when they, when they like, went out there and just beat the dog shit out of them, that one game, mm -hmm. Kawhi was taking the ball every inbound. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they wasn't really, they only did that, like, one game. And I think it was a, a half of, the other, of another game. So I already know, like, all right, this is what, this is how they going to come. If, you know, if I say if shit hit the fan, this is what they going to do. So, For sure. I don't know, man. I, I definitely, like I said, I like the series. I feel like it was a good one. I feel like it was Dallas's coming out party. Really, Luca's coming out party, and they putting mm -hmm. the league on note. What a, the league on notice? Definitely the Western Conference, because if you mediocre in the West, it's not happening for you. Like it's just, it's just right. not happening. You might as well just go ahead and line it up to tank. I mean, to go ahead and tank for the season, because it ain't gonna happen for you. It's guys that's playing in that seven eighth seed in as guys as in that ninth tenth seed that's very serious in the west so you it, it's uh they, they ain't taking no prisoners man cot let me get your thoughts on everything about this game um and and just the series in general yeah man so like y'all really hit uh the nail on the head man but i would say like uh, like you said we saw the uh mavericks without porzingis only got a small sample size of them so we kind of knew the mm -hmm. outcome but if I think it's plays this entire series. I think it's definitely a, a different ball game. I, I don't. I'm not saying the Mavericks would have came uh, would have won, but yeah. I do think it went seven. Uh, and um, as far as but like you said, Luca definitely showed out. Um, they definitely showed that they are a contender for the future. Um, and and they coming. They got a lot of youth, and and Luca is that guy. He's the real deal. So um, yeah. him and Porzingis. It can be a, a tandem to be reckoned with for the next 10 years. You know what I mean? For sure. Especially if they get another piece out there. You know what I'm saying? Dallas and Mark Cuban, he, he bought his bread. Too. So I know they're going to be looking at your moves. Probably going to be something serious. But other than that, um, next series, uh, as far as we're talking about Clipper, who, who we like to see next series? In the yeah, area. like who, who you think uh, either either out of I mean, just who? What do you think is gonna go if they play Utah and uh, what what uh, do you think is gonna go if they play Denver? Yeah, I, um, to be honest, I think I see going, I see it going six either way. What um, either team? Either either team. I think. Look, I'm giving I'm giving Utah. This is a team that we came in uh, prior to the series that we were saying. That Denver was going to beat them in six. They had Denver backs on the ropes three one. That that says mm -hmm. a lot, personally. You know what I'm saying? D Mitch is the real deal. He went for fifty seven. Like he got two back to back fifty balls too. I know Jamal. I know you're talking about Jamal Murray, Nate. But mm -hmm. that's at the latest fifty ball. Don't get like Donovan Mitchell did the double fifty balls before him. So I think regardless, next series, um, Utah is built to to. You know what I'm saying? Give the Clippers some serious bump. 
Um, See, the I 50 think... the fifty pieces for me just show that they can't guard each other, though. You know, like, yeah. neither of them neither of them are, are really good defenders. And I don't think either – I don't think the Nuggets nor the Jazz have, like, well-equipped defenders to handle a guard like that. The Clippers, on the other hand, like, to Micah's point, I could see Jamal maybe touching 30 two, – maybe two, three times in a series. I don't see him going for – 40, and 50 that's, and, against. And that's, more, that's on a crazy <laughs> night. Yeah, you know, like, I don't, you know, it's based off the averages. Like, they don't have yeah. – I, I understand. Y'all don't think d can get a Clippers 40? I mean, I, I think, think he could so. maybe, maybe, maybe once, maybe once, but he wouldn't consistently be floating around the 40 point range. Like, I, you know, they don't play the Clippers this year. He's gone for like 20 something, 30 something. I got him averaging 30. I, he, well, he, he, gonna, he, he gonna have to take like 20, 20, he gonna have to take like 24 yeah. shots to get that 30, I think. Because I ain't going to, my bad. Kawhi on. You good, you but, good. But I, we got the defenders, like, we got long defenders at, at pretty much every position. PG. You know what he did to PG. So we, we know. We do. That's that's we, fair. So we, we definitely know what he did to DP. Put like this: if Pat Beverly isn't healthy, then you got Mike Conley matched up with Reggie Jackson. That's a that's a win on Utah side. You know what I mean? Roy so new. He's a side. We, we already know D. Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just not sold on their other players. I, I'm yeah. not sold on their yeah. other players yeah. against the Clippers. Mike Mike Conley a good pro, but there's a reason he ain't been an All Star. Like I'm yeah. for sure gonna put my stock, my I'll defense be in faith to be better I'll than my, <laughs> No, 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 no. But I'll put my defensive faith behind Kawhi and and PG and you know uh Mike Marcus Morris is a good a plus defender when he comes in the game. Zubac is a solid rim protector when he gets his little spot minutes. Reggie's yeah. actually a pretty solid defender too. Like he's bigger than Mike Conley, so I'm not going to say that he's going to take him out his game, but he is a he's a solid defender, but I just don't think with our length and like our guys, I think Denver is good, you know, like Jamal's good, but Gary Harris hasn't been playing most of the series. Who's their best defender? Mm-hmm. You know, Will Barton ain't been playing either, which is their best defender. They was relying on a lot of young guys. Michael Porter, he probably got a score. When Donovan Mitchell had that 57-piece, Michael Porter probably got 25 of those buckets himself. We yeah. don't have no – we're not going to put they, no – they, they took him out the game in the fourth quarter. We're not putting nobody on the floor that's yeah. not a, a, a positive defender, unless it's Lou Williams. And that's In that case, you know, that's and about it. My, my thing, though, is with, with that, though, bro, like, Dallas is in a good situation just because they they have a lot to sell. And I believe Cot, we were sure. talking about this. Um, just about the, the, the taxes, you feel me? So they, they can sell the no state tax. So I feel like it's gonna be easy for them to get another piece there. But just to uh go back to what you all were saying, because I didn't get my projections. If they play Utah, I'm not even gonna say it's a gentleman sweep. I'm sorry, it's going in four. Like <laughs> it's just a sweep. I, they don't have what it take, bro. Cause I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. They the, the Clippers not about to play no six game series against no anybody's, bro. I'm not saying that they anybody's, but they not on that level, bro. Well, they don't have Bogdanovich yeah. either, who who yeah. was like a big piece for them early on in the season. Yeah, you saying anybody's, but D. Mitch is a proven star, damn near superstar in this league. I'll I give you so. All right, so so yeah. real quick, just, yeah. just, go, just go through yeah. their yeah. matchups real quick. So yeah. at the five, right? At the five, you got you got uh Zubac and, and Gobert, right? Rudy. You said what? You're taking Rudy in that. For sure. I don't I don't know. I guess I'm taking I'm, ta- I'm taking, taking Rudy. I mean, he, I mean I mean neither of them are like offensive threats, but everybody besides yeah. I think that matchup is a wash, but everybody besides D Mitch and Mike Conley, those are the only two arguments that you have. But at the same time, you can damn near argue that D. Mitch isn't better than the matchup that's we gonna present because it's probably gonna be Kawhi. That's what I'm saying. Gonna, who, in, in clutch who, situation, it's probably gonna be Kawhi. What, what Utah, who's Utah's four? Who plays the four at their power four? Joe Ingles, Royce O'Neal, or or Joe Ingles. Those two probably hey, start out there. It's over with Marcus Marcus Morris and and somebody else gonna have that. Like that's over with. <laughs> no, Ingles can can bump with both of them. Joe Ingles, I don't is, think so, bro. Well, who Marcus bump. Morris and Kawhi? He could bump with George? PG. He, he could bump with PG for sure. Actually, I didn't say Paul George or Kawhi, bro. Calm down. But, the, but that's but that's our two and our three, though. No, that's Joe the Clippers Ingles, two and three. Joe Ingles runs the four. He yeah, but I mean, it's it's switchable though. Like in in the Clippers offense, the two through four isn't really like a two through four because Marcus yeah. Morris could play the three at any given night, and PG could play the three at any given night. So Kawhi, this, Kawhi this, could play the four too. 
This they line up right. So they got Mike Conley at the one. Yeah. Who, who would you put on him? Reggie Man, you gotta Jackson. start Reggie or Patrick. If Patrick have healthy, you gotta put Patrick on him. That's all. Yeah, yeah I get I mean, I don't know. I just I just don't see it as good as, as everybody else see it. And with Denver, I feel like it'll be probably five games, you know what I'm saying? Five or six at the at the stretch, you know what I'm saying? But, I give Utah uh, five. I give Utah five. Just just off the sole fact they're gonna compete, like Kot's saying, like, and they do have Donovan Mitchell, who's a star, and I think a star can get you one win. But I I wouldn't be surprised if they got swept. If the Clippers come out and play like the games that they won against Dallas, the yeah. blowout, and then last game, if they come out the gates like that, I mean, I just don't see Utah having enough, especially with Bogdanovich out, who is their best shooter this year. Spacing wise, that's important playing mm-hmm. the Clippers because the defenders are so versatile. So that hurts. Uh, but if Joe Ingles and Royce O'Neal knock, knocking down shots, I mean, they could definitely stretch it to five, maybe six. But mm. I see it. I see it closer to the five, maybe sweep uh, range for them. And just, just real quick before we go to this uh, next topic, Kyle, you said one thing too. I just remember you was like Utah came back. I mean, no, nah, they they went up three one and had them on the ropes. But now they. Bro, that don't tell me shit. They tied up right now, and that don't tell me shit about about Denver either, because they they went down like that. But it do tell me they could fight back. But I don't know, bro. Like I don't know. It's a good series, you know, definitely. But... A... I got one more point about. I think those are two talented teams, in my in my opinion. They know they're not on the level of the Clippers, but they are two talented teams. Both of them. You know what I'm saying it's been a great series and a battle because of that. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I think the Clippers, you know what I'm saying, they're that. I got the Clippers coming out of the West. So I'm saying that they're going to lose. And I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, you know, I'm already knowing. You know what I mean? But, but uh, yeah, but as far as that, I mean, they both teams, come on, man. These dudes is putting up historic numbers. You, they hot. This is the bubble. Remember, this is the regular life. They, they are, like, but the playoffs for them, true. Look, look, the for, bubble. Look, for the playoffs for the most part, bro, the, the, the bubble, the bubble, the bubble, the bubble playoffs been pretty standard, bro. Like, I would I would have called I would have called the Mavericks going six with the Clippers without the bubble presence. I probably would have called the Blazers getting five against the Lakers without a bubble. You know what I'm saying? I think that the selections so far have already gone pretty straightforward. Like I thought OKC and Rockets would be a good matchup either way. And they go on seven. I thought Denver and Utah would be a good matchup either way. But every other first round series, I think, has been pretty predictable. Like the bubble really hasn't had too much effect. I think, like, you know, it did in the bubble bubble regular season. But as you saw with TJ Warren, he wasn't that guy in the playoffs. You feel me? The the playoff stars, they showing up when they need to. But I want to uh piggyback off one point y'all said about Luca in yeah. Dallas. Uh like the next few years, they in a good spot. One, because no state tax. But also, Luca is on a rookie deal, so they could go get a they could go get a big piece for a big price right now because they don't have too much money locked up everywhere else in the other stars. So, if I'm them, I'm trying to go. I think we they, talked about this. Before. I'm trying to go get that Bradley. Bradley. I'm trying to go get that Victor before we have to extend Luca, you know, and see yeah. what we got for a year or two before we uh, sign that extension. But the West, they they definitely on notice. I mean, everybody been on notice. They they know who Luca is in the league. Facto, facto, man. Just to to move on because you brought up the the heat and I mean the uh the Rockets and the um and OKC. <laughs> so we I want to get caught. I want I'm gonna start off with you. I want to get your reaction to game six and who you got for the night and did Westbrook blow the game. <laughs> I'm gonna let oh, you man. go, Kyle. Uh so first of all, we're gonna start off and remember we said this was going seven. So I'm not surprised. I called yeah. it they see what's going to get that dub last night. Y'all see CP3 mm-hmm. cashing them out. Hey, that's right so disrespectful. That's grimy. <laughs> grimy as hell. Hey, 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 he's the truth, man. I'm, he's the truth. Man. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get on Westbrook. Let me, let me, I like, let me, hey, Westbrook completely blew the game. <laughs> Come on, man. Turnovers is the right. playoffs, dude. <laughs> Turnovers yeah. were inexcusable. Our last turnover was ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. like, come on. I don't know where his head was. I, I don't know, man. That, that was not acceptable by any means. Yes, I put the game mm-hmm. on him. I also don't solely put it on him. I put it on James Hart. And I'm going to go back to a yeah. point that I mentioned a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think it was last show. We were talking about our top five and 
I'm saying how hard late game decision making and performance isn't isn't that like he yeah. improved at all. In all mm-hmm. honesty, uh, actually, I think he used to be better. You know, what I'm saying in late game situations, like I, I just noticed he was tentative. He it's like he decision making is over. It's like he's it's he losing his confidence. Uh, and after a minute, he's left in the, in the game. It's a claim, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't think he touched the ball enough. Uh, mm-hmm. He was, like, passive. If it, like, I know I was watching uh, the after show uh, with Kenny and Shaq, and they were saying, man, you got to have the ball in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, for sure. He has to he have the ball in his hands in that situation. And, uh, yeah. My, I, I yeah, feel they like just, they, I got, they did a good job. My bad. What'd you say? I was got gonna say, uh, and as far as the game tonight, uh, I got. I'm. I'm gonna have to go OKC, man. After that performance last Woo! night, uh, changing it and, up, huh? Let me tell you why. Because remember when I said if Russell Westbrook comes back, I got Houston. Hot but take, baby. Bang. Hey, man, that, he that, that ain't a hot take. I, I'm glad he joined the team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So Russell Westbrook, he isn't the Russell Russell Westbrook of old. After that last game, I, I don't know where his head is at. His jumper's gone. You know what I'm saying? They, the, the defensive strategy already smaller than OKC. So you drive there with Adams. They got length. They got athletes over there. So it's not as easy. So and then CP3 is that guy, man. You know what he say? I, I loved his post game. He said. And I know he was throwing shots at heart. I know he was. He said, For sure. the boy, he said, real hoovers make plays when it's time to make plays. Big time players make big time plays make in big time, time moments. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So uh exactly. and he so he he does that. And he did that mm-hmm. yesterday. So hey man, I, I got I'm going with C from here on out. Fact though, man. I, I, that's, I, yeah, that's cop it up. Thank you, cop. Thank, thank you, cop, for coming, but, for coming over to the, to the right side. Man, one thing I can say though about this, uh, about the game six is they kept, uh, Harden off the line as much as possible, bro. You know, he mm-hmm. usually goes to the line 12, 14, damn it, sometimes even 20, sometimes, you feel me? And they kept them to, to eight. Which is, I mean, that's still a lot, but if a Harden, like, that's decent. Like, you're doing fairly good. Um, they just kept him off the line, man. And I feel like, like you said, everything about Chris Paul, he is what they, what you think he is. And I, and I keep saying it. I keep repeating it. I even tweeted yesterday. Hey, man, <laughs> I apologize because I didn't expect them boys to be in the playoffs. And mm-hmm. he showed, like, bro, you don't need – all these stars and stuff to be in the West competing though against a, a star. I wouldn't say a star loaded, but shit, they got Harden. He's a superstar. You got Westbrook. He's a superstar. Eric Gordon isn't a slouch. You feel me? He could be a six man of a year if he has a good season. You know what I'm saying? Then you got You've been one before. Uh, yeah. Then yeah. you got Austin Rivers who who play roles on, on playoff teams and stuff like that. So they 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 have a good team. <laughs> And when when you look on paper and compare that team to OKC, it's hard to even make sense of it. But mm-hmm. with a leader and somebody that's a pure a purist in basketball, it's always gonna make sense. Like you can't cancel that guy Chris Paul out because he's gonna do what it takes, bro. And I don't know, bro. That midi damn near dangerous, bro. <laughs> like that shit. Not damn Jordan, near. Bro. He he didn't have yeah, the best <laughs> point guard mid range for a long time. Bro, that's, that's, like, that's his bread and butter. Bro, that joint damn near Jordan level because it's like, bro, he popping it then um, where I think they were down six and he hit two threes in a row, like late, mm-hmm. like stretch, like two, two and a half minutes left. Nice. Big threes, big, you know what I'm saying? And it take, it take a real vet to do that because them guys on this team probably wouldn't do wouldn't have did that. You know not, what I'm saying? Not Gallagher. the step back three over six, yeah. eight, uh, lengthy Robert Covington. You know, most players in general – don't have that in their bags. It's, it's a very select few PGs that I'm even trusting to take those shots down by six in the clutch. Man, hell yeah. Okay, I'm let me uh I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna let you uh go ahead and, and uh end us off on this topic. But man, like I said, CP3 the real deal. <sighs> man. Fuck it. We may all be going for okay. See, I just want to see it now, now just because they yep. 
now but the thing is though because this gonna get us to some whole other shit real quick because i know we got a time limit because it's, it's cop mama birthday but if these niggas lose in the first round what is it like bro you damn near gotta blow that team up bro because it, it's like it don't even it's make not. sense i i know it's, it's young and everything but no bro it is no fucking reason for y'all to be losing to to okc bro like you you got literally one one superstar over there you feel mm-hmm. me and, and he old like cp3 what he 34 35 like come on bro and just and i and i know westbrook is second game back i feel it but mm-hmm. nigga you don't lose it like that bro like that the shit crazy but uh nate i'm gonna let you go bro so i'm gonna start with yesterday's game I will say that I put dual blame on Russell and James Harden in the fourth quarter. Their offense was just it was it was really bad, man. Like mm-hmm. not getting the ball in James Harden's hand. I think that's an issue of coaching because Mike D'Antoni, you got to call a timeout, get the ball out of Russell's hand. Russell's turnover was just so egregious that it was really, you know, it was just like, come on, man. Like you're supposed to be this point guy. You can't be running full speed ahead and then try to throw a jump pass behind you it with, with 20 seconds left. Like, you know, that's not a winning formula. But then again, James Harden threw the ball to Danilo Gallinari in game, what was it, two or three for a pivotal turnover. So, you know, both of their star players have made two very egregious turnovers to end the game. So, you know, I put the blame uh, primarily on D'Antoni, man. Like his late game offense just sputters. You know, they go away from the three-point shooting, which I I understand because, you know, you can get cold, you'd rather attack the basket, but they kind of go away from it completely. And if you are going to go away from it, you got to have the ball in your best player's hands and James Harden. But I'm going to say the reason I picked OKC is what all you guys have been saying. Like, what Chris Paul doing to me is no surprise. He just can't do it in the further rounds, you know. He can get you there in the first – he can get you to that second round. You know, he can get you a nice uh, first-round series, maybe some game winners. Like, he, you know, he had one against the Spurs over Tim Duncan. He may have one again tomorrow, you know. But that's kind of the ceiling, and it's all that's kind of always been my issue with Chris Paul. Once it starts developing to the later rounds, you know, he kind of – collar gets a little tight. Uh, I do think – both of hold these on, teams. Hold on, hold on, real quick though, Nate. Uh huh. He was having talent with him. Not saying like he. Well, he was having a, a immense amount of talent with him when he was getting yeah. out like that. Now it was just not like he just got. That's different. He got people there. Like of course right. you got Gilders Alexander. You got Adams. You know guys like that. Ferguson. He's doing all right. Gallinari. Mm-hmm. Whenever he turns it on, he's good. But he's just not surrounded by them guys. You know what I'm saying? No, he's but definitely not he definitely not surrounded by a Blake Griffin or a DeAndre Jordan. But you know, he got some really good athletes on his team. I, you know, Lou Dort, everything he can't do in terms of shooting. I look at him and I really like the type of player he is. Like he goes out there and you know, he don't stop shooting if he's wide open, which is good for offense. You know, like you can't just stop shooting. And yesterday he had two big time threes, you know, uh to kind of bridge the gap. So, you know, you just gotta keep having confidence in yourself. And I think that speaks to the organization that OKC's built under Sam Pressy. Like, no matter who they have in there, they always going to get guys to play hard. Like, when KD left, Russ was playing with Kyle Singler, you know, so this is some really what you what you would consider scrubs. But <laughs> they, they get them to play hard, which is dope to see. So, you know, I want to see OKC get this win because I'm tired of seeing Houston uh, in their current state. I think they win or lose this series. Doesn't matter. Mike D'Antoni's gone. They're not re-upping his contract. And I could expect, you know, if that happens, I could expect Russ to be on the trading block as well. Um, yeah. I just don't think that the current system, that the way that they built it, is going to work to win a championship. And I'm not, you know, that's not a hot take. I think anybody that really knows basketball has been saying from day one that a team constructed like, okay, I mean, like the Rockets is not a championship contender, especially when you have your best player fold in uh, clutch moments, like, you know, a little bit too often. So yeah. whoever gets to that next round, it's either a sweep or a gentleman sweep i'm not going no higher than five yeah either houston or okc and i ain't gonna lie real quick before we get to that next one you were saying that that uh just about the last play of the game they did then tony did call the time he drew that shit up yeah you take. (laughs) and he was like oh that's what they wanted to do like me i don't give a fuck what they want to do I know what I'm about to do to win. You know I'm, saying? Hard so, I'm going to get yeah. the ball, and I'm ISO, ISO. your, your ISO. best defender. It doesn't matter who's on me. I don't care and, if it's Luke Dort. I don't care if it's Chris Paul. Shit, it could be Kawhi Leonard. I'm calling and, the ISO if I'm James. And Harden. if he don't, and if he don't hit, I live with it. 
yeah. I'll live with it. I don't care. I'll live with it if he don't go to the cup and you know what I'm saying or hit the tray. I'll live with it. But as far as it going into Russ, not saying that Russ is a terrible decision maker, but you've seen the game he was having, bro. Mm-hmm. The, you see him, he had six turnovers at that point. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Got to keep putting the ball in his hand. This is crucial. This Russ is got definitely, boys out of there. He's definitely rusty, but also I'm going to say, I don't know if Russ really wanted to see himself get traded to Houston, or was it just an available option going to play with his best friend or a good friend? Like that might be something that after the season, like a story that may end up developing because whole time, like, you know, Russ d- didn't have a no trade clause. OKC traded him because they knew they could get assets and it was time to start rebuilding. But, you know, James Harden was a good friend. But did Russ really want to play in that offense either? It's something that we haven't really even thought about. Like, did Russ want to play with no yeah. center? I highly doubt it because Russ's best years was with Steven Adams averaging 10 assists. You're throwing lobs. You're getting pick and rolls. Like, he's, you know, his offense isn't – his offense, his game isn't tailored to how Houston has conducted their offense. So, if I'm him – I'm not going to say I'm asking for a trade, but if I'm Houston, I'm probably going to explore. He got a lot of on his salary, and, you know, it doesn't work. So blow it up. Hot take. Big facts. Westbrook isn't leaving Texas. He's going to Dallas. Oh. I'm going to leave right there. I'm going to leave right there. I'm going to leave right there. I said, hell no. I don't don't like that. (laughs) You said, hell no. I don't like that one either. Yo, hey, like Luca, that. Hey, hey Luca gonna say stay with him, bro. Stay yeah, with him. Luca, Luca gonna say you can come off the bench and leave yeah. and leave Seth Curry, Seth, Seth Curry to 15 points. But I'm damn. the man of the show. Damn, Straight damn. Up. Yeah. Let's go yeah. ahead and go to Dallas. <laughs> but that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. But we gonna uh we got the 515. We got 25 minutes, so we're gonna roll through these uh last little four topics, man. Uh I'm gonna start it off with the Heat versus Bucks game one. What did it show me? It showed me that Jimmy's a dog. It showed me that Pat Riley's a dog. It showed me that Sposter's a dog, Hero's a dog, and they got all dogs there being led by a dog. And what dogs gonna do is be dogs, bro. <laughs> they going, they going yeah. to, that's what dogs gonna do. Hey, I and I feel I hey I'm I'm nervous for the Bucks because you I mean uh, granted Giannis had a bad game but hey, them boys hey, out there, remember my hot take. Yeah, remember my hot take. Well, remember your hot take. We go actually when I edit, I'm gonna edit it in right here. The previous <laughs> hot take from last episode right here. You feel me? But uh mm-hmm. <laughs> man, like I said, bro, I is I'm nervous. I don't know what the Bucks gonna do. I'm sure, like, granted, it is a game one, it's a fill out game. Uh, Giannis did did play bad, but I don't know, bro. I feel like the Bucks are not afraid of these guys. And what's the chances of Jimmy just staying hot like that? I don't know. Um, those were some tough shots he knocked down, but I, I feel like them boys are fearless, and they may get this thing done to six. Real talk. Ooh. And if that mm-hmm. happened, if that happened, uh, because that's that's my hot take. I think them boys may get it over in six. And if that happened. Uh, Milwaukee definitely getting well. Somebody walking, <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah. Gonna be walking in Milwaukee, and that nigga wear jersey number thirty four. So uh, <laughs> let, me, let me hop in here, man. You I'm, got it, you got it, Nate. You got it. I'm not ready to abandon my pick just yet. Yeah, but I will say that yesterday's <laughs> game did show me that the Heat, like you know, like you said, aren't afraid of the moment. And I didn't think that Jimmy had a forty point performance in him in the playoffs just because I don't, you know, see his scoring as being that potent. I think yeah. yesterday was probably the most jumper jumpers I've ever seen him make in the game. So he was extremely hot in yesterday's game. Like, you know, turnarounds, three pointers, you know, mid ranges. Like I, I don't think I've ever seen his offensive bag, like, you know, just so polished and which I, I like to see, but all that being considered the bucks, you know, they were still in the game toward the very end. I think that, um, you know, Giannis has to be on Jimmy Butler. I don't I don't see him making those shots toward the end of the game. You know, like what Mike Budenholder has been doing. Yeah. He can't be the third highest scorer, scorer for them. But no, no, no. But, but what Mike Budenholzer has been doing all season was playing Giannis minimal minutes and stuff like that. Like he barely played 30-something minutes yesterday, which is cool. You know, that's a good recipe for the regular season. But right now, man, Giannis got to be out there playing. If it takes to win 40 minutes, like when they were up, they were up like 10 points. He came back, made a run. I'm putting Giannis in as soon as possible. You know, um, their late game offense was pretty bad. I'd like to see Giannis get some more post ups closer to the basket. You know, 
Um, Chris Middleton, I think he had a good first half. But like you said, it's a feel-out game. I'm not ready to abandon my pick, but I will say mm -hmm. it's definitely going to be a much tougher road for the Bucks. If if Giannis not going to be able to make free throws and uh, Jimmy's playing like that, which, like I said, I don't necessarily see for a whole series, he might have a few 20-point games. But, you know, for him, it's about the defense too. So it's not just about scoring with Jimmy. So, you know, he's a dog. He's leading some young guys who aren't scared, but you know we'll see if it, we'll see if the Bucks can step it up next game. If if they don't, I mean, I, I'd be willing to change my pick. Yeah, but the thing is too, like you said, I could live with a twenty eight from Middleton. I could live with twenty four from from Lopez. Mm -hmm. I can't live with a with a forty and fifteen from from Giannis. I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying. And if that's mm -hmm. what they counteracting, because they were kind of shielding off the the paint for Giannis, and it wasn't mm -hmm. easy. Um, Man, I don't know, bro, because you got guys down there that ain't no joke, bro. You got uh, Udonis has them still. You still got um, uh, Eagle Dollar. You D ain't playing no minutes, man. No, no but he, he <laughs> down. But the, you know the you know the presence. It's the, the, it's the culture. Got, yeah, you got Bam there. Like them guys. You got Hera. Hera really sealed finished the game. He closed he the game. He like. All of them oh. think they the ones. Yeah. Well, see, what I would usually say is that, you know, like younger guys in the NBA usually takes a little bit minute for them to go through it. But at the same no, token, Giannis, no, Giannis, no. Giannis is still Giannis is still very young. That's what I also have to remember. You feel me? Like in the grand scheme of when most like of the best players win they ships, it's usually like 28, 29, 30 is when dudes start winning their chips. Like mm -hmm. Michael ain't winning his first till he was like 28, 29. Same for Braun, same for KD. He was like 30 when he got his first ring, you know, same for Kawhi. I mean, he was younger on the Spurs, but as that guy, you know, his first title came in like 29, you know. So I got to remember that when I'm taking it into account for Giannis that he still yeah, may not even uh, get his Kawhi peak. like 29 right now type shit, I think. I don't even think. That's what I'm saying. He, he was like 28. He was like 28 last year or something like that. So yeah, I'm not going to say Giannis is in his prime just yet. So, you know, I got to remember he's going to take some bumps and bruises as well. He only 26, you feel me? Like, no, 25, yeah. bro. Like, that's scary in its own right. But I got to remember, like, I can't necessarily rely on him to know what to do in these moments either because, you know, he's he's not – he doesn't have that experience just yet. But uh, I'm hoping that, you know, they could do something different because if they lose game two, I feel like the series is over. I you know, you don't want to go down to you. You don't want to go to down 2-0 in any series, but especially not, not second, second not, third rounds. Not to no dogs. Cock, get in there, bro. Get in there. Well, what's your thoughts on everything? Man, y'all know who I was rocking with from the jump, man. I'm telling you, that his team is not playing around. Mike, mm -hmm. you said a great point about that entire organization. The 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 culture is to be a dog down there. Jimmy Butler, you know how I know because Jimmy Butler's interview. He said, What's the difference between Miami and Philadelphia? He said, I can be who I am here. And we all know Jim, who Jimmy is. You know what I'm saying? That's Pat, that's Pat Riley. Pat that's Riley. That's not Pat Riley. You know what I mean? And it, it goes deeper than just Jimmy Butler. And, and that's what um, that's what I've been preaching. It, their their depth is second to none in the league. You know, from from if you if you saw the guys from Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder, Iguodala, Bam, and you, you got those five dudes in the locker room. I'm telling you, that that makes a huge difference. Well, you know one I mean? person you forget, and, and Goran Dragic too. Goran Dragic Goran probably been Dragic like was a player. He, he led he Goran led that Dragic first round series in, in points per game. Hey, and so, I'm, I'm just talking about the aspect and, and the mentality, you know what I'm saying? Because if you come in with that mentality, like, I don't care who you are. I don't care that you Greek freak. I don't care that you the MVP. I'm coming to take what's all the food off your plate. And that's how, exactly how they planned it. And that's why I call what I call uh, Milwaukee. They are proving, like, like I said, this this bubble is different. You got to still remember these dudes coming off. They only been uh, four months rest. And momentum is everything right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The Bucks, the fact that they they haven't really been playing well the entire bubble. They actually weren't playing well uh, the stamp right after the All Star break, right before the uh, the the they delay. Weren't. You know what I'm saying? It was like so, three and four in the last seven right, games. Before, right, man. And, and all I think that they they ran into the wrong team. In all honesty, uh, like you said, Greek Freak is still young, so it's not throwing the curtain for him. Like he made a great point as far as Jordan the, the break went in there.
their title, first titles at 28. KD won his the first, you know, so he has time. But this year, I think Jimmy, how old is Jimmy? We got to stop throwing Jimmy because Jimmy just Jimmy 30, last yeah, yeah, 30. Yeah, Jimmy 30. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jimmy's a vet, you know what I'm saying? So see, I wouldn't see, look, but my, that's my thing. Old. That's my thing and, with Jimmy Butler, think, though. Like, you know, I'll go ahead. My bad. No, that's all good. good. Yeah, my thing with Jimmy Butler is like, it's like, yeah, he had the 40 ball yesterday, but that's his first 40 ball in all the years. Like, he didn't been in NBA playoffs. And I, I remember seeing Jimmy lead Chicago Bulls. And I'm not saying he can't do it again, but just based off, just based off sample. Just based off sample size, though, I don't see Jimmy Butler going out there and having 40 a game. Like, you know, if that's what if that's what it's going to take Miami to win this series, I don't see them winning the series on the back of Jimmy Butler scoring. Like you said, if anything, it's going to come on the depth, though. Like Goran Dragic, him having 20 that's plus points per game, that that, that is going to win the series, not just Jimmy Butler that's scoring. All, that's, my, that's my point. It's not mm-hmm. Jim Goran. It's – of the team, it's the fact that Tyler Hero can go for thirty at any moment. Don't let him get high. He's a dog too. Going thirty, I'm telling you, he's a. <laughs> Duncan Robinson can go for thirty. I guarantee you, he can. Duncan Robinson, oh uh, yeah, Robinson. Duncan definitely. Yeah. He just, he just need that thing. shot on him. That nigga didn't drop twenty forward off eight of twelve, yeah. off eight or nine from the three. Yo, the biggest nah. X factor in that series, though. I would say it's Bam out of bio. It's not even Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is the leader, but the X factor is Bam out of bio. He was making critical plays down the stretch. He can match Giannis's com- better than anybody else in the league. He can match Giannis's uh, physicality, his size, his athleticism. He is that. You know what I'm saying? He's built for. He's built for that, and he's a dog too. So I think he's an X factor. Like he made critical. Uh, he had a couple critical uh, tap outs. Um, you know what I'm saying? He was hit. He got the mid. He got the mid range jumper. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a big fan of bro. You know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a dog. So um, I'm, like I'm gonna say, man, man. I was rocking with, and I'm sticking with him. I think, hey, Micah, you made a great point. I think it's going six. I like Miami in six. I don't think it's going six. And, and, and real quick though, Kai, just because yeah. I was about to speak on a point you made, it's like. You know how sharks could could you know just smell the blood and Since water. The blood. Yeah, Since the like, panicking. That that's what they own right now. And you made a great point with with Jimmy just from Philly, and you got to think about him in Minnesota. Jimmy right. know he was some dog. He know he was some dogs yeah. right now. Oh, he told he, he told a he told a Wiggins. He told uh Cat nigga y'all, y'all soft. Y'all saw, yeah. and I'm going and yeah. I'm going to hoop with the third string just like Kobe did, and I'm gonna bust y'all ass. And I'm out here. Then in Philly, man, y'all niggas playing over here. You trying to? He said, process. I, don't who, he said I don't even know who's in charge around here. And yeah, I, don't, process, I nigga, process what, nigga? I'm in Miami where I know, nigga. You, you know what it is right now, Miami? It's like a pack of wolves. He looking back. He looking at his own. It's like, yeah. Hey, look, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. We, hey, hey, we need to pump. Hey, we gotta hey, pump the brakes we on can't, that. We can't ever because look, look, they, 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 some dogs. I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna give you all that. But I'm, but off this, off the one game sample, considering how well, look, hold on, hold on. I know it's not a, a one game sample, but I don't look at the record throughout the year. They beat them three times to one now, and yeah, the that's one fair. Because Jimmy Butler ain't played. So but look, I'm, I'm gonna say this, bro. I'm gonna say this. If I'm if I'm Mike Budenholzer, you know, because look, I I can agree with y'all point. I don't think it's gonna end in six, but you know, I'm still thinking it's going seven. But like I said, I gotta see game two. You feel me? That'll tell me a lot. But if I'm Mike Budenholzer, the one adjustment I'm gonna make, Giannis gotta guard Jimmy the whole game and make it uncomfortable. Like you said, it's not just about scoring; it's about making him uncomfortable in anything he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason that he should be dribbling the ball up against single coverage against George Hill. Like, to me, that's just unacceptable. You feel me? I don't know if you're trying to keep Giannis fresh or what, but it's not about fresh anymore. It's about winning game. So, you know, if I'm putting my best player on their best player. Like, I'm, you know, it's no reason that Giannis can't guard Jimmy because you got somebody like Brooke that could guard Bam out of bio. Like, I'm not scared of Bam out of bio shooting. I'm more scared of. No, he can't. I don't know, bro. Bam out, of, Bam out of ball is not that polished offensively that I'm scared for Brooke Lopez to like, you know, he could go for 20, but that's that's fine. Like hit, as long as Bam not going for 30 like points on Brooke, you feel me? That's acceptable. But Giannis has to be on Jimmy, bro. I, I agree just, with just, you. But, but finish, finish this out, Kai, so I go to this next. Put on that. See, the heat will make them so dangerous. They have a lot of guys who can score. 
like you said, just scoring driving. I'm telling you, man, Hero is the real deal. He's a scorer. He's a queer scorer. He's a guy can shoot. Duncan Robinson is the best shooter in the league right now. You got a lot of dudes who can who can get a bucket. So it's not just Jimmy. I've watched the Heat, and I have watched him when 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 the defense of when the decent when the defense strategy is to take his scoring away. He does other things. He gets other guys involved, and those mm-hmm. other guys, it just takes Jimmy gonna find you. It just takes them to step up and knock down the shot. And them but look, guys, cause, 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 considering all that though, last game Jimmy had a great game. Tyler Hero had a great game, a good game. Goran Dragic had a good game. Bam had a good game. And they still won by a thin margin. And that's why that's why I'm hesitant to say that the Heatle ended in six, because considering all that and the fact that Giannis, you know, he had some open looks that he just didn't convert. You know, like it was a part of Miami's defense for sure. But, you know, he converts some of those looks like majority of the time that he was missing the other day. But that's why I'm not ready to say it'll end in six. But I can see the Heat winning it, because, like you said, the depth. But I'm also not going to put my stock into a rookie like Tyler Hero. Yeah, he's a flamethrower. But shit, he reminds me of like right now his game is like Jordan Clarkson. He could have a 20 ball and then he could probably go for like five points the next game. You feel me? Depending on how how it goes. Like I've seen Tyler Hero go go off, but I've also seen him disappear. And that's That's what happens with young players. So I don't have a I don't. That's why I don't want to put too much stock into him. But, you know. Like y'all said, man, y'all made great points with that. Uh, they have like amazing depth. You feel me? You can bring somebody like Iggy off the bench, Jay Crowder, yeah. Goran Dragic. To me, is you know my favorite player off the bench for them. Like he's a he could be a great piece for any contender. Really, just really, because really a starter. We got to throw. Yeah, he, could, he could be a starter. Kelly Olynyk. Yeah. go for thirty in a playoff game. Fuck man. Kelly Olynyk. No, <laughs> <See, laughs> yeah, like, they were they were remind me of like. What you want? But but I know, bro. Because we, we got to we got we got to get on out of here, man. We gonna go to this uh this next topic, man. So we can make sure Kai get out of here and treat his mama to a good dinner, man. We gonna go Boston and Toronto game one. Let me get y'all thoughts on this. Uh, real quick, like I said, it's it's another fill out game. Um, Toronto was off. I'm not really, you know, I'm I'm not gonna say I'm not impressed with what Boston did because I I think Boston definitely came out and handled business. But I, I feel like this is going to be a harder one than Toronto expected. I don't know if Toronto walked into this one thinking that, all right, we going to just, you know, we we going to handle what. I don't know if they walked in thinking that these guys are tough. Uh, I feel like uh, Toronto's pretty much been on that wave of, uh, man, we, we don't need no real star. We out here. You know what I'm saying? And I feel it, but that boy Tatum, that boy is real. Kimba, I don't know what is woken Kimba up these last, like the end of the last series that they was in and this one. I don't know what woke him up, but he's yeah. here. And he's he like, like he, he going to the cup. He going to the cup like, nigga, you kind. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so and, and you got JB, you know, so I don't know. I feel like this another one. I'm not going to be surprised. If this shit end in six, you feel me? So I don't know, I mean, bro. Cause I, I feel like Boston really like they are really I feel like they are really better team than, than uh Toronto. Granted, look, I'm, they're they're very young, but I, I feel like they got it. Nate, you go. Look, I'd be surprised, but also no, I'd be very surprised if it ends in six because even watching the, the last game, bro, I'm not gonna say that the Celt- the Celtics actually they had a good showing. I'm not gonna take anything from them. They made mm-hmm. all their shots when like open shots. Their best players play well. However, if you watch that game, the Raptors had so many wide open looks that like on a good day for them, on a regular day, I wouldn't trust Fred Van Vliet wide open at the three point line. But for some reason in game one, he wasn't converting shots. He had like nine, maybe like twelve points. Like I don't see him going for another terrible outing like that. And I also don't see Pascal Siakam having three fouls in the first quarter again. You know, having to sit your having to sit your best player for almost an entire half. You know, it's going to be difficult for you to win. But you know, Celtics they do have to me the better players like you know Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kimball Walker. But I don't think that the Raptors are going to go out sad just because how well they're coached. And I just you know it, I, it's hard for me to see Fred Van Bleet struggling like that again and Pascal at the same game. You know, like I, I don't see that happening again. And I like the I like Toronto's size. Like when they playing like really at their best, your surge is playing well. He knocking down some threes. Marcus Saul is out there knocking down some open looks, setting big screens, you know, but nothing was falling. Like when I was watching the game, I'm like, damn. Like yeah. they really, they really <laughs> can't find the rim, you know. And like they was getting wide open looks. 
But that's not that's not to take anything away from the Celtics. Maybe that was by design, you know, who yeah. they were allowing to shoot. But yeah, I, I think it's gonna go seven. Just you know, I, I like Nick Nurse uh, in terms of like how well he coaches. I think he makes good adjustments. And I think mm-hmm. they made some solid adjustments last game. But you know, when no one can find the rim, it's kind of hard for me to gauge, especially in a game one. So you know, game two, I think Toronto is gonna come out with a you know much more potent offensive production. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna say for sure they'll win, but I do I do have a feeling this one today is gonna be a lot closer. They go down 2-0. It's dangerous. But uh, Cot, go ahead and finish us off on this topic before we get into this last one. Man, um, Celtics, Celtics, Toronto, man. I, I I'm, I'm sticking with my initial prediction. I think the Celtics are still going to get them. I think it's going seven. Um. I'm not going to overreact off the first game. Uh, yes, I'm not surprised the Austin won, but Nate, you made a great point. Uh, sometimes when you can't, when you're not hitting, like I feel like it wasn't necessarily the offensive. Just, they just weren't hitting, you know what I mean? And, and the Celtics, they got, they they, got they their were guys. On. So they were on, you know what I'm saying? Kimba, Tatum, all they, 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 they stars, you know what I'm saying? They was on. So uh, I'm not going to overreact. I, I like Toronto in game two. I think I think they're going to tie the series up just because – um, you know, that's a championship. They got championship DNA over there. You know what I mean? Van Vliet, Siakam, you know what I'm saying? So they definitely not sweet. But ultimately, I think this series is going to come down to who has the best player on the court. And my personal, mm-hmm. my personal opinion, I like Boston. Jason. I think I, li- I like Jason and, and I like Kimba. I like if you go if you go matchup by matchup, I think uh, Boston um, it ha- has you know what I mean? And as far as coaching goes, two, two, this is a, uh, a chess match between two great sure. coaches. Fact, though. And Brad Stevens is my personal uh, – he's personally my favorite coach in the league. I think his, he's an offensive genius. You know, and Nick Nurse, he's definitely just a former coach of the year this year, man. So he, he's yeah. about his business, too. But uh, I think Brad Stevens – I think Brad Stevens got the edge, man, personally. And uh, I think – uh, Boston, you no, know, they they serious, man. I, uh, I'm really. I want to uh, shout out Marcus Smart because I really yeah. have gained uh, uh, more respect. You know what I'm saying for his game. At first, it was like, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying. I feel like a lot of dudes, if somebody in time score, it's like, oh, they some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, he's one of them intangible dudes, a glue guy that you need on your roster. You know what I'm saying? Like he's made all-time great defensive plays just by me watching the game I'm like yo yo that's different you know what i'm saying so mm. he he so uh, i like boston in the series man but i got i got toronto game too and just real quick before we go to this last one man i've been praying bro i've been praying gordon Hayward don't take that player option for 30 million next year bro i've been praying because well, it's nigga, too late he done already made that decision in his head as soon as it said 30 million you know, he <laughs> you, know, you know he ain't going to get it nowhere else. But, and dog, you think what they can do with that in Boston? Bruh, the, you can best believe he is signing that player option Bruh, as I, soon I, I as it's back, printed. I made back door <laughs> a little 15 million. Like, hey, man. <laughs> Shoot, get like, just get on. Get out of hey. here. <laughs> we get out of here. But, right. uh, just to uh, go to this last one, man. Uh, is the is the families joining the bubble a distraction for players? Because recently Jimmy Butler has came out and said, "Man, hey, I don't have nothing against these guys. Let's bring in a family here, but this is straight business." Um, I want to get y'all thoughts on that. Uh, Nate, I have you lead it off, man. Uh, <laughs> do, do I think it's gonna be a distraction? Hell no, nah, because dudes are with their families. 95 percent of the year when they play in any other time so I, okay. I don't think it'll be a distraction sometimes you know you have a bad day with your with your wife or something like that you know your kids getting on your nerves but these dudes are the most professional of professionals i don't think kids or you know it, it might hurt your your uh it might hurt you for a day or so but you know i, I don't think it's too much of a distraction like in real games they're flying to, from city to city probably seeing plenty of famous women you know seeing their kids, you know, like I don't, the best of the best players, your family shouldn't be a distraction. If anything, it should be an addition to the quality of your life. Cause if you got a young kid or something like that, you know, 
then uh <laughs> but <laughs> dang he on westbrook whoever whoever that is in the comments I said, westbrook wouldn't even bring the most ratchet people i can guarantee that <laughs> more ratchet people in the nba than russell but Man. you know I don't think it'll be a distraction as long as their family's not on BS. Like, you know, as they shouldn't be, they should be enjoying vacation in an all expenses paid for Disney bubble. You feel me? I feel you. I, uh, Kyle, what's your thoughts on that? My personally, I don't, I don't think it should have any effect. Uh, Nate, mm-hmm. Nate made a lot of great points. Like if anything, I think it should be more ambition. It should be my son is in the crowd. I'm about to go for 50. That's I know personally I, I would be, and I know any other real Hooper man, this is the playoffs. This is mm-hmm. more man. And like if your wife and your kids are coming down there, it ain't going to be no bad vibes. I guarantee you ain't no player with his wife or spouse is beefing with his spouse right now to the point where it would be something that would affect him on they the wouldn't, They wouldn't have came down, down to the bubble. If that was the case, they wouldn't they, even have flew down. The bubble, if that was the case. You know what I mean? Right. You seen your cat, you seen kid, like, like, like let's be right. Giannis, let's speak for, uh, for, for an example. He got his, mm-hmm. his baby down there. Say the baby's up at 3 a.m. crying. Like, at that point, it's, it's wifey handle it. Like, I got to play a game tomorrow. <laughs> I need to get my shit out of there. Facts. Like, that's a, I got 50 million on the line. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like it goes both ways, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, so I don't. Think it should have any effect, man. I think that uh, Greek freak. I mean, he per- guy that didn't have a good game last game. You know what I'm saying. I don't think that had any effect. I think yeah. it was Eric Spoelstra and Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler <laughs> and it's Andre Iguodala and that whole he the reason why he didn't have a, a good game last game. So. Nah, man. I, I think if anything, it should be inspiration, more ambition to go get a bucket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I, I agree with both of y'all. I don't feel like it is, you know what I'm saying? Definitely uh turn it like make anything bad, but I do feel like it can get interesting. Cause mm-hmm. with that few of people at a game, I don't know if it's security in there. So what if <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Niggas be feeling shifty sometimes. Giannis head button, you know what I'm saying? White boys and all types. <sighs> nigga may nigga you may want to sleep. Go- you feel me? Like, man. Hey. hey. hey <laughs> you look, just gotta it- watch out because certain fans, because I know y'all know, yeah, and I know y'all yeah, probably yeah. got some family like this. But but I'm it's sure, right? Then again, I'm sure the they're not I'm getting sure. in the bubble with the blower. Yeah, like I'm sure them type of family members not <laughs> gonna be <laughs> in. Not gonna they be in the, the bubble. The <laughs> <laughs> they ain't gonna have a. They ain't gonna they have a burn the in the bubble. Yeah. Everybody get down right now. <laughs> they, can't, they can't have the glizzy in the bubble. But I, I do feel like it could get interesting just because, like, and I'm sure those type of family members aren't going to be there. But <sighs> it could get interesting just depending on you know the dynamics of it all. You feel me? You you may you may your wife may be out there uh taking your kids to, to see Mickey Mouse and his wife may be over here. You uh you, you what you say, you know, women petty, so <laughs> but no, we go we go keep it going, man. Just just to, uh because we about to get out of here. Just last one, real quick. Uh Utah Denver, me tonight. I got Denver wrapping it up, man. Who y'all got? I'm gonna go with my original pick. I'm gonna say Denver. Okay. Kyle, who you got? I'm going to go a little pick too, man, Denver, only because uh, that momentum, that momentum, the momentum they got from game three, I mean, from game six, that, that's huge, man. But I will say, I did switch it up after it was 3-1. So this series has been great, man. I wouldn't be surprised if d Mitch went for 60 or something and won it at the end. I would not be surprised Jeez. if that happened. Hey, 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 he got 60. <laughs> he could do it. Hey. Hey, he could get 60 uh, on these, uh, niggas. Uh, I ain't even going to uh, hold you because they can't uh, guard. Maybe 50. I still 50. But 40 ball, hey, I think yeah. it's going to come down to the wire. So whoever hitting, this going to be a it's gonna be a shootout, man. I think it's, it's Ho- going to be. Hopefully, hopefully, whatever side go out fighting, bro, I don't want to see no blowout. You feel me? me neither. Yeah, nah. but, uh, this, this ain't going to be a blowout. Nah, yeah. Fine. But no, man, like I said, man, I appreciate y'all for checking in, man, especially you, Kyle, with your, with your OG birthday today, you know, uh, uh, with a, uh, a loss in the family. So I definitely appreciate you for checking in. Nate, you already know, man, West Coast, the best know. coast. He checked in fresh off the flight. You feel me? Fresh so, off the flight. You feel <laughs> you feel right here to Mike and friends. 
no jet Ooh. lag you feel me so definitely make sure shout out to you and uh man just make sure everybody out there catch the uh at the line we're going tonight we're going to do a, a game recap we're going to recap the last two games from yesterday and we're going to recap the uh that celtics um raptors game tonight so make sure y'all go check that out we're going to go live with that um man just shout out everybody shout out to national sports chat make sure you go over there follow us national sports chat on uh ig check us out on youtube uh follow us everywhere man we everywhere make sure everybody's at name on the screen right now make sure you go follow nate make sure you go follow cot make sure you go over to tov sports make sure you go follow them uh follow mike and friends on ig and uh man like i said i don't have anything else y'all got anything else nah we in and we out Yes, man, sir. rest in peace, John Thompson. Man, rest in peace, yeah. Chad with Bozeman. Uh, and we up out of here, man. Mike and friends, yes, sir. Yes, sir. My boy, it's something you can't understand. How I just keep killing, man. I'm from the south rim, spinning like ceiling fans, gambling with life. No complaining about the deal of hand. Back when niggas used to ride around the dip set. Now these cops will shoot you 